cortisol, our first reaction to it is always negative or stress related. In this video, I'm going to explain how cortisol actually can help you burn fat. It's just about making sure you understand the levels of modulation with cortisol. So let me explain exactly what cortisol does in the body, both the good and the bad, so that we can clear up some of the myths, but also understand where we draw the line. What cortisol is, is a steroid hormone that's produced by the adrenals. It's produced not just in response to stress, but in response to everyday life and everyday function and even some foods that we eat. Just about every single cell in our body has a receptor for cortisol in it. What does that mean? That means that if cortisol levels are too high or too low, it affects our cells in just about every area of our body. That's why you hear people talking about cortisol levels being too high and causing body fat issues, causing mood issues, causing circulation issues, because it's affecting cells across the board. But the thing is, this day and age, we have to start paying attention to too little cortisol too. And here's a fact, if your cortisol levels are too high for too long, eventually it crashes and makes your overall cortisol levels too low. Still a problem. Here are some of the things that cortisol does in the body. It regulates your blood sugar. It can regulate your mood, regulates your metabolism, regulates your blood pressure, but it also plays a role in regulating the water and salt balance in your body. Have you ever noticed that when you're ultra stressed out, that you're holding more water than usual? Maybe you're bloated in the face, maybe you're bloated in the abdomen, pretty normal as a result of stress, but too little cortisol can cause that problem too. But let me explain how cortisol and the right amounts of it actually trigger some fat loss. We have something in our body. It's called hormone sensitive lipase, HSL. Maybe you've heard of it before, but what that hormone sensitive lipase does is it's an enzyme that triggers fat to leave the stored tissue of your body and become mobilized in the bloodstream. Believe it or not, cortisol triggers this. Cortisol is one of the key triggers of actually releasing fats into the bloodstream where we can use them for fuel and burn them. You see, it makes sense. Cortisol levels elevate when we start to work out. So of course, it's gonna call on the fat stores to be released so that we have some energy. So then why are we constantly negating the effects of cortisol? Well, the simple thing is, even slightly elevated levels of cortisol for an extended period of time, it starts to have sort of an inverse or negative effect, the opposite of what it was doing before, once it's been elevated for a little period of time. Here's some of the things that you can typically experience if you have a lot of cortisol flowing through your veins. And make sure you listen carefully because some of these or all of these might even apply to you. Excess weight gain, mood swings, anxiety, loss of libido, sleeplessness. Any of those sound familiar or do all of them sound familiar? Now I want you to take a look at that and start thinking about when you may have started having some stressful times in your life and see if they all correlate. You see, sometimes it's not just the stress that's affecting our mind, it's the stress that's affecting our mind that's affecting our body that's really playing the key role. But what's crazy is too little cortisol has some pretty similar symptoms. Now, if you experience some things like muscle loss, some fatigue and loss of energy, general lethargy, but also a loss of libido, and also you're realizing that your sleep pattern is disrupted, not just bad sleep, but your sleep pattern, your circadian rhythm in through and through is messed up, then you might have an issue with too little cortisol. So you can see how it's hard to ascertain what the true issue is. A lot of us don't realize if we have too little or if we have too much. But some of the best ways at the end of the day that you can get through the process is by adopting methods like meditation to truly start to have an adaptogenic effect on your body. If meditation isn't your thing, you can't find the time, I suggest you try to find the time, but if you truly can't, start using something like ashwagandha or maca root as an adaptogen. Why? Because those adaptogens don't just lower cortisol. You know, we don't wanna go down the road of just trying to lower cortisol, because then if we do lower cortisol and we're already too low, then we can't trigger that hormone sensitive lipase to help us burn fat, and then we're back to square one and we feel like garbage. But what you do wanna do is you wanna modulate that. And adaptogens like ashwagandha and maca help all hormones balance out and find homeostasis. So that's gonna be the first step. But this isn't really a pitch for ashwagandha or any kind of maca or adaptogen in general. It's really a pitch for you to stop looking at cortisol as the enemy 
you start realizing that it's okay to have salt, it's okay to have a little bit of cortisol, it's okay to have these things that stimulate that production. The thing is, by stressing about cortisol, you're creating more cortisol just from that stress. So at the end of the day, keep it locked in on your health and keep it locked in on these videos. And if you have any suggestions on video topics that you'd like to see or expanding in the world of cortisol, make sure you comment below, but also give this video a share. Make sure you're sharing it with your friends. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button just so that you can make sure you never miss one of my videos to cut through the noise of the internet, cut through the noise of all the bogus people out there on the intraweb. I'll see you soon.